Alrighty, this is an informal interview uh, between Steve. Hello, Steve. Right, how are you this morning? And me, exactly, me. Uh, I'm I'm not in the morning anymore. It's already late afternoon. I'm off to Freiburg with my daughter to some brainy science thing in a minute. But before, I really wanted to talk to you or ask you a couple of questions because I've gone through your course at lightning speed, so I haven't really taken all of it in, but... At this point, I, I, I'm glad I've got an office chair with arm rests because otherwise I would have fallen off it. And I kid you not, this is not blowing up smoke anyone's backside. It is... I, I was constantly thinking, if people could experience this, if they could look at this, instead of looking at a sales letter, they'd all be uh, all over this. I mean, it is insane what is in there. And the, the reason I'm saying it's insane is because... Um, Yes, you're touching on technical things on how to do them, but when you truly appreciate what LinkedIn really is about, I I had this complete misconception that LinkedIn is is about well, it's networking and you reach out to people and then you know you you build some connections and maybe someone finds your stuff good and then you do business, but it's not at all. The, the way you demonstrated that with the, this SSI magic, um, LinkedIn is a bit like Instagram and like Facebook. If you give them, namely the things they need to create a great user experience, to build a community, they will reward you handsomely. So let's quickly talk about this reward thing, why uh, LinkedIn is so great, and perhaps also why am I, am I the only one who's so stupid and completely didn't know what LinkedIn really is about? Well, let's start with the second one first, uh, and let me say, no, of course not, you're not stupid, right? But you have been given false information. In fact, you, you asked me yesterday, somebody else reached out to you and they said, well, Steve, you know, I don't, I don't like having to, you know, build up all these fake profiles if I want to be seen in all these different locations. And the bottom line is what this person's talking about is there's a lot of bad information out there. People are saying the wrong things about LinkedIn because they don't get it. And then what they're trying to do is black hat things that cheat the system. It's not going to work for you. You're going to end up in LinkedIn jail, which means you'll get your account suspended. But when you do things organically and you reward the system, yes, LinkedIn is at its core another social network, which means they do reward you for valuable content, for building relationships, for actually keeping people on the site. That's what they want to do. They want to know that, hey, if somebody engages with Steve, they're going to read more. They're going to watch more. They're going to message more. They're going to use the site more. And that's what LinkedIn wants. You know, the other thing I did not appreciate at all, and I think that's a big difference between, well, that's my impression at least, between LinkedIn and, for example, Instagram, is that LinkedIn tells you where you are lagging. I mean, that whole, you know, the, the circular thing with the, the four different quadrants or whatever you want to call them, the four aspects of your interaction and where you need to improve to get your score up. That is awesome. I mean, that's the first platform where I'm seeing this, where they go, look, we want to help you get a better user or create a better user experience and sell more. Yes, you're talking about the, the social selling index, what's the SSI, that is, it is a score. And LinkedIn publishes that for everybody. And they don't make it real obvious unless you're in the paying mode, the LinkedIn navigator. Yep. But even if you're in the free mode, you can find out what your SSI is. I show you how to do that. And then I do show you the four core areas and how and how to work in each of those four core areas. Now, for instance, um, uh, I just had a testimonial posted on my site today about somebody who grew his SSI about 25% just in the first week of doing what I asked him to do. I tell you what, there's another aspect to this which I'm not asking, or I'm asking you not to respond to it. It's just an observation. When I looked at the course, like I said, at a very high speed, you gave an example of how to interact with people uh, based on their profile. I'm not going to give away more uh, information, but the information given there on the screen, I, I just, uh, my eyeballs nearly popped out of my head was like, okay, this is this kind of person. I mean, don't be aggressive. Use this style, style of uh, sentences. Approach them this way. This is the best way of talking to them. I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, that was gold right there. It's like, you don't even have to think anymore. They, you know, you see the information there. This is how you need, uh, need to communicate so people get your message and respond to it. Absolutely amazing. 
Maybe another observation. One of the resources I showed. That yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yes. that's <laughs> uh, very cool. That was very, very, very cool. Now, talking of um, responding, the other thing I was impressed with is the speed at which you get responses. I mean, the one example you gave with Anya, where she uh, you know, ha has a podcast and you, I can't even remember, did you reach out or she reached out to you? Whichever way, uh, within a couple of minutes, there was a basically you'd agree to do podcasts. I mean, that is just mind blowing. No, I reached out to her following the techniques that I show. I showed how to identify people that have influence. This is a shortcut. Even if you don't have authority and credibility yet, if you're just getting started, but you have something that you're passionate about, you have experience and, and talent. I call that your pet project, passion, experience, and talent. If you find people that already have influence in that subject matter and you reach out to them, in this case, Anya had a podcast. And so I introduced myself and volunteered to be a guest. She quickly responded, as you saw, and invited me to be a guest on her podcast. Which we, by the way, see on my screen here. I'm recording the screen of the the your thank you page where people go to after the podcast. So if I understand correctly, uh, that podcast has now happened within a week or so of you having that conversation. Absolutely. We, we recorded it right away within a couple of days. And, and today, as we're making this recording, she is launching that podcast. She's emailing it to her entire list. And of course, she's going to share the Uh, the living daylights out of it on social network and it all puts me at the core being the expert um which is awesome which also opens the the next question now, we've talked about this before um the question if i am new i'm not an expert you know that's what is on a lot of people's minds and at some point you're you know you're not an expert you get started and you talk about there's a whole module on how to do that, how to get around that. Give us a, a couple of hints here. Well, you know, thanks for bringing that up because people say that to me all the time, you know, Steve, but we don't have what you have. And, and I just, I want to be clear. I did not come out of the womb with people following me. All right. So I started at the same place that everybody listening started. But, you know, what, you know, hopefully, in whatever line of work you're in, you're doing something that you're excited about. You have got that passion. You've got that experience. You've got that talent. This is what you like to do, hopefully. If not, you should seriously, we have a different conversation to have. But if you're doing something you love to do, then speak about that because your passion will will definitely make you look like an expert, will we'll definitely serve you well in the absence of, of, of the experience. And, and chances are, if you've been doing this for a little bit of time, you've got a lot more experience and you're giving yourself credit for anyways. So, if you, you know, amazing thing happens when people interview you and they start asking you questions and you start thinking of stories as we've had today. And these stories are all about your experience. And you're going to be, <laughs> you know, you have a, a lot more experience than you realize when you start thinking about some of the stories that have happened to you in the past. But when you talk about these things, this is how you build your, your credibility and your authority. And these influencers, if they have a podcast or they write a blog or, or articles or whatever the case might be, they, they need guests. They need interesting people. They need to speak with you. They want to speak with you. So they will connect with you and they will put you up on a pedestal. You know, that's kind of weird. The, the way I got started was by interviewing others. And back then there was no, I mean, link, LinkedIn did exist, but it didn't exist at this scale and certainly not this sort of. Uh, you know, as a major advertising and business getting platform. Uh, and it seems like it's exactly the same thing. It's just now all moved to LinkedIn. Back then, it was not an issue. You reach out to influencers. They were um, RTIR online. That's where they were advertising. Uh, that's where they're hanging out. You know, please be a guest on my... Back then, there were no podcasts. But they, it was basically publishers, uh, authors, experts... They were hanging out there and they were very, very open to getting even a nobody like myself back then um, to go and talk to them. Alrighty, I, I suggested we talk about it for five minutes now. It's already 10. So let me close out with one question, namely the one that made me fall off my chair yesterday. And it's the, your one distinction between lead generation and lead qualification. There's a whole module on that. Give us the 30-second summary of why that's so important and how 
LinkedIn is the perfect fit for doing it? Well, the quick summary is to make sure that if you want to be successful, you need to learn how to qualify people that you meet and find the hottest opportunities. And I show you how LinkedIn is the first step in doing that and what you need to do and, and, and how to find people that are ready, willing, and able to hire you now, to buy from you now, to do business with you right now. And these are the people that you need to be able to filter out and identify so that you can have quick success. And that's what lead qualification is about versus lead generation, which is just building a list of anybody with a pulse that's interested in you, which is an okay place to start, but you need to qualify them after that. I'll, I'll round that out with the analogy on Facebook. I'm more active on Facebook, although I am now going to have to go on LinkedIn. It looks like <laughs> the, the most uh, stupid oversight I have done in the last 10 years. Uh, on Facebook, exactly the same thing is happening. Facebook's algorithm is so powerful that you cannot compete anymore. You can't go in and outsmart it by layering in different audiences and, you know, all of these techniques and tips and tricks you have learned over the past. They are more powerful. And the best way you can help Facebook identify your ideal prospects is by telling them, we want ideal prospects. Focus on those who actually give you money, those who do business with you. Most people do it the other way around. They go out, well, I'll do a PPE, some, some page post engagement campaign. And once people are engaged, then I do a lead gen campaign. I'll get them onto my email list and I nurture the relationship. And then finally, I will sell them something. And that's working against the algorithm because you're confusing the algorithm. So it looks like both platforms are basically heading the same direction. The more you qualify, pre-qualify someone in the sense of respectfully saying, look, this is for you or this is not for you, or finding that out by uh, means of questioning, um, the better you will do and the better you, of course, serve them. And then as a result, these platforms um, serve you. They, they give you more. And that's you know, how we started this whole thing. So I can't believe that LinkedIn actually you know, really, really wants you to succeed and they help you and show you how to do it. I'll finish with one observation. Um, we talked about this yesterday. You are in sales or were in sales. I was in sales. And after the call, I, I, it suddenly dawned upon me that um, A, I enjoy s talking to real salespeople, not the salesy, pitchy, you know, I've got my script, but real salespeople who qualify and listen, actively listen and find out what is important for me as opposed to for them. Because the moment you say, well, you know, here's the stuff that's important for you. I can help you with that. Well, you've basically made the sale. And I, I realized this, what a good salesperson you are, when towards the end of our conversation, you went, oh, why don't you tell your kids to take the bicycle? So basically, you'd been listening about me going on about my bicycle and brought it up in a very, very, you know, why in in the context of this whole conversation very cool <laughs> well, thank you i i guess it's become natural because uh i was just curious <laughs> and that that's precisely the point that in my opinion that is precisely the point a, a a good salesperson is genuinely curious what makes the other person tick because when you are curious and you really want to find out, as opposed to like, oh, you like football too, because you see a football jersey on the wall or something, when it's genuine, you build no like and trust. And that is, of course, the foundation of you know, any sale. The sale is basically based on do I know, like and trust this person? Is there a relationship or not? Steve, thank you very much. That was awesome. This five minute chat has talked uh, turned into 15 minutes. It's my fault. I take the blame. I apologize, but... But I enjoyed uh, <laughs> it, Mike, so don't, don't be too hard on yourself. <laughs> and, th and thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, Vite, you're doing a wonderful job, and I, I love your people. I've already connected with some of them, and, and, they, and they're, they're enjoying the course. They've had some questions. Uh, we've got a great community, so we, we can get you feedback. All, people are already posting their success. So I hope that somebody listening to this podcast are, is the next person to join us. Absolutely. Alrighty, Steve, thank you very much. And thank you, Mike.